And of course, if you're in Queensland, you can tune in to your local ABC radio. That's 612 in Brisbane and also 612 in Ipswich. And there are links to emergency services on our website. Now let's get an update on the crisis with Nick Dole. The top stories on ABC News. The death toll from the floods in southeast Queensland continues to rise, with 15 fatalities now confirmed statewide. The body of a 24-year-old man was found in floodwaters in the Brisbane suburb of Durack after the Brisbane River peaked at 4.46 metres this morning. And another man's body has been discovered in Mile Creek, that's near Dolby. In Ipswich, flood levels in the Bremer River continue to recede, with residents now facing a massive clean-up. About a third of the city's been flooded, with more than 3,000 homes and businesses swamped. But the damage could have been a lot worse. The river didn't reach the expected 22 metres. It peaked below 20. The search for the missing is continuing in the Lockyer Valley, including the town of Grantham. The body of a man was found in a field near Grantham this morning, and 12 people are still reported missing in that township. There's been some relief for residents in flood-affected areas of New South Wales with an evacuation warning for the north, north coast town of Maclean cancelled. But the SES says an evacuation order for Brushgrove, Cowper and Ulmurra remains in place. And parts of country Victoria are now dealing with flash flooding with several towns affected overnight. The Defence Force has ramped up its efforts in the Queensland flood response. There are now 19 helicopters assisting and military planes are transporting more food and supplies to isolated parts of the state. With more on the response to the disaster, here's Simon Pallon. In the face of sheer devastation, the Queensland Premier is urging people to stay strong. We have to remember who we are. We are Queenslanders. We're the people that they breed tough north of the border. We're the ones that they knock down and we get up again. And there is a huge clean up ahead, especially at Toowoomba and in the Lockyer Valley. This is a valley that has been completely and utterly devastated. There are whole towns that are now unrecognisable. More than 25,000 homes are flooded in Brisbane and 3,000 homes inundated in Ipswich. River levels are now falling everywhere except for Gundawindi and Condamine. Thank God it stopped raining in the last 36 hours, that's been the huge change factor here. But even as waters recede in most areas, there are still many dangers ahead. People will slip over, there'll be cuts and scratches, there'll be organisms in the, in the water, moulds begin to grow very quickly, uh, the smell and the stench, it's all going to be, uh, it's all going to be mixed together. The message is to stay away from the water. Don't go in there with bare feet, make sure you've got all the, the proper cleaning gloves. Council will help provide all those. We've got to start doing this properly because we don't want anybody injured as has happened in, in 74 with electrocutions and other factors. The Queensland Health Department wants people to consider getting tetanus vaccinations because floodwaters are filled with all kinds of debris and personal hygiene is also crucial to prevent common infections from spreading. Simon Pallon, ABC News. In some promising news for Queensland's economy, the oil and gas producer Santos has been given the final go-ahead for its $16 billion liquefied natural gas project at Gladstone in central Queensland. Santos expects the project will create 1,500 jobs in the first half of this year alone and is set to generate one-third of Australia's LNG. The project includes a 420-kilometre underground pipeline and an expansion of production in the Surat Basin around Chinchilla in the state south. It's set to boost Australia's current LNG production capacity by 35%. And for more on the development of that 